Hello guys, we are ready to start lecture five uh, and this time we're focusing on chapter four, coordinate transforms and ROS. You know, when you're working with any kind of robot, whether it's a humanoid robot or a mobile robot, it's always important to know where different parts of the robot are over time. Here we have a picture of Baxter and RViz showing all the links uh, or all the frames of all the links um, in the robot that we keep track of. If this is the first time you see an image like this, you might be very surprised to see that there are so many frames. But in fact, uh, it's important for us to be able to, to, to track the motion of different links of the robot over time. Of course, there's going to be some that we will be using a lot more than others, but ROS will give us all the tools that we need to keep track of the pose, that is the position and the orientation of each of these frames over time in our robots. More so, it's also important not to just keep track of the physical lengths of the robot, but sometimes of the data, sensor data as well. Okay, and so we use three-dimensional frames to know the position of a link or data and also we use orientation um, and together we get that pose. Notice that when the robot is moving its arms or any movable joint then those frames will be changing position and orientation over time. So time plays an important component of tracking frames uh, in a dynamical environment. Okay, let's introduce coordinate transforms first. We'll introduce the idea of a frame, a point, a vector, a rotation, and homogeneous transformations along with TF and, robot, and ROS. One of the key pieces of information that we need when we have a robot manipulator is knowing the pose of the end effector. So in this particular diagram, the end effector here is uh, signaled by the sixth frame. And this point would be crucial for kind of any kind of interaction with the environment. Sometimes we want to grasp something, but other times we may want to solder or paint or do some other kind of interaction with the environment. So this end effector is always crucial for grasping. What we need to know are two pieces of, of information. Number one, we need a, a position which is going to be an x, y, z point or vector. This can sometimes be represented by an independent vector like this one right here. At the same time, we need the orientation. Now, orientation is a little bit more complicated because it can have multiple representations. Uh, we can use roll pitch yaw angles. Uh, which are a derivative of Euler angles. We can use rotation matrices like the one you are seeing right here. We can use an axis angle representation. Uh, we can use quaternions as well, and which is actually the favored representation in ROS. And there's a few other representations. But in general, we'll say we want a six degree of freedom pose which is three degrees of freedom for the position, and we say uh, three degrees of freedom for the orientation. You know that uh, if we had a camera right here on the hand or externally mounted somewhere in our setup, we will often want to transform uh, the data from one coordinate frame to another. So we might change, we might get some the position of a target object from a camera, but in fact we want to know that position with respect to the base of the robot. So we would need to change the pose from the camera coordinate system to the base of the robot coordinate system. So that's what we call a transformation. Okay, And so this image right here might, for example, illustrate that we might have two different frames of reference, A and B. Imagine, perhaps, that the camera is A and the base of the robot is B, and basically the coordinate frames are 
pointing in different directions. X of A is pointing this way, X of B is pointing that way. And so if you had a point with respect uh, to a coordinate frame A, like for example right here, you might get some, some X here, zero in the Y, zero in the Z. But that same point, when measured by the second coordinate frame, the red one right here, might give you some negative X and some positive Y and maybe a zero Z. So we're talking about these kinds of coordinate transformations. Let's first introduce the idea of a frame. A frame, like the one shown in this gripper, always has a 3D origin point right here at the intersection of the axes. It will also have three orthonormal vectors. So orthonormal means that the three vectors are orthogonal to each other, or there's a 90 degree angle between all of these vectors or axes. And the normal part means that their length is just unit one. Okay, and here uh, we can use the notation NTB, and the hat here represents their, uh, they are unit vectors. So the N usually is going to be pointing in the normal direction of, of this uh, intersection of the two grippers. The T can be tangential or orientation vector, which kind of intersects the fingers. And then B is the approach vector and usually points out of the palm of the hand. So this is one other way of representing orientation and rotations. Uh, using this NTB notation, which you'll see in the book. And each of these vectors uh, can be represented uh, by a column vector here in this matrix R. So we might have the NXYZ components, the TXYZ components, and the BX, BY, BZ components. Okay, so it has three columns and they're all orthogonal to one another, as we can see in this diagram. And we can also always find uh, the third column by using the cross product of the other two, so, although we need to be careful with uh, the order. But here a T cross B gives you an N, a B cross N would give you a T, uh, and N cross T would give you a B. So um, it works this way. Okay. The next uh, main idea is homogeneous transformations. Now make, let me make a quick note right here. For a detailed presentation on the subject, you can look at Peter Cork's open course at robotacademy.net.au. Uh, here he's got a series of classes all online uh, on 2D geometry, 3D geometry, kinematics, and so forth. And they're a great resource uh, for you to, to study in detail. They are excellent material and uh, easy to understand, easy to follow. So please take a look. Um, there might be a Yoku link, uh, but I haven't found one yet. Um, I may try to upload this at a later time. The homogeneous transformation matrix encodes both the translation and the rotation of a frame with respect to another frame. Okay, so we're always looking at what is the relationship of the transformation between one frame and another frame? This four by four matrix can be compactly represented in this way. A three by three rotation matrix on the top left, a three by one vector for the translation on the right or top right, uh, filling in of zeros here at the bottom, and a convenient one here at the bottom right corner of this matrix. This last row just enable us, enables us to do uh, matrix computations uh, a lot more easily. And the expanded form, the homogeneous transformation matrix, takes this form where here we have the transformation of the um, x vectors the transformation of the y vectors and the transformation of the z vectors for the orientation and then the translation right here. So when we talk about transformations, for example, here we have two frames, A and B, and we see that 
they're not at the same point, so there's a translation, and we see that their axes are pointing in different directions, so there's being a rotation. The translation comes first, the rotation comes second. Uh, we would describe this as a transformation from frame A to frame B. At the same time, we can also describe this transformation as the transformation of B with respect to A. So both of those terms are the same, and you need to make sure you don't get them confused. Now, how do you express that mathematically? We're using this notation right here, where the base frame, or the parent frame, is A, and we place this on the left side of our variable T as a superscript. And then we put the child frame, the one that is getting transformed, or the one uh, that is the child, we're going to put here on the right side, on the lower side. So when we go from A to B, we're doing this thing, and we can also refer to it as B with respect to A. Transformation chains. More than one transformation can be chained. So imagine that you want to tra do two consecutive transformations. For example, going from A to B and then B to C. This is very common in robotics, uh, robotic kinematics, where you might start saying, hey, I'm measuring uh, a point from the base of the robot. But then you want to know how that point is going to look at the end of factor. Imagine that's C. And you've go, got to go through a series of steps uh, to get there. For example, you might jump over to the shoulder, maybe the elbow, maybe the wrist, until you get to the end of factor. So if we want to go from A to B to C as a transformation, we can express that uh, using this notation first, the transformation from A to B then the transformation from B to C, where these two indices must match, and that gives you a resulting chain transformation from A to C. Notice that the order of the indices is important, because a transformation from A to B is not the same as the inverse of that, which would be B to A. That is, in fact, a reverse transformation. So you might be rotating 90 degrees about x. If you revert the indices, then you would be doing a negative rotation about x. They're not the same. In ROS, we have a package called TF. TF was specifically designed to help us in performing uh, transformations. TF uh, actually can be a node, it can be a library, and it can be a topic. For right now, uh, we're talking about the topic TF. When we look at this topic, we'll see that we have a list of all the transformations, and therefore uh, a list of all the link poses on the robot. So in the previous diagram where we saw Baxter having tens or even hundreds of links, this topic is keeping a list of all the transformations between any two frames, any two frames. So let's say you have A, B, and C. What TF will do is compute the transformation from A to B, but also from A to C and from B to C. And this way we have that full list of transformations in the system. Okay, and all that data is saved or published on the TF topic, and obviously it's being updated over time because those transformations will be changing as a robot moves. Okay, what we're going to be doing in, in this section is we're going to study TF using a mobile robot in Gazebo. From last week, you might remember how to do that. The first thing that we want to do is open Gazebo. To do that, we're going to use Gazebo ROS, which is the default Gazebo package uh, that works with ROS. And then we're just going to open an empty world. So Gazebo will open both the backend server and then the client with the graphical user interface. Okay, and we have an empty world right here. The next thing that we're going to do is load this mobile robot. 
this mobile robot has a left wheel, a right wheel, and then we call this a caster wheel, which is just for support. And on top of the base, we're going to place a very simple arm with one joint. Okay? So to do that, we just launch this launch file from the mobot URDF package. So I open a new terminal, start boss launch. and then launch this file. As soon as I, as I do that, you'll notice that Gazebo opens this model right here. Fantastic. The next thing we want to do then is analyze the TF topic. Okay? And TF has, uh, uses message, the TF topic uses messages of type TF2 messages, TF message. So if I open a new window here and maximize that window, I can say Raw's topic list. Okay, so you'll find the TF topic right here. And then we can look at the info and see that we have this TF2 messages, TF message type. If we want to see what that looks like, uh, we can use Raw's message. Now, actually, before showing you that, let me show you a little neat Linux trick called a pipe. A pipe is activated with this symbol right here. And what it does is you can put two commands on this pipe. So I'm going to put Ross message show just like that. Now, the trick here is that this second command will take as an input whatever output comes from the first command. And you know that the output of the first command is this tf2 messages, tf message. And so when I press enter, it's basically I'm asking this uh, pipe command to show me the ROS message for that topic type. <clears throat> oh, I must have made a mistake here. Let me see. <clears throat> it's not ROS topic info, it's ROS topic type. <clears throat> my bet. And so here's what we get. Okay, now let's take a look at that on our presentation. And you'll notice uh, the very first thing that we have is that the name of this uh, type is transforms. And this is a geometry messages transform stamped type. And we have this array and it has no fixed size, so it's a variable length array. That means we can have as many as needed. That's ideal for TF because for every robot, we'll have a different number of transformations. So we cannot fix that size over time. Now, in this message, uh, what we want to think about is, is it the same as a homogeneous transformation? And the answer is no, but in fact, it carries the same information as a homo homogeneous transformation, and it, in fact, carries more information. Let's take a look at that. First, this uh, subsection of our message has a transform, which includes a translation and a rotation. The translation is this 3D vector, which consists of an X, Y, and Z parts. Effectively, this corresponds to the fourth column of a homogeneous transformation matrix. We also have this rotation, which is uh, represented as a quaternion. Now, if you've never heard of a quaternion, I'll provide you with a resource just in a moment for you to study this later. <clears throat> Quaternions are an alternative representation for rotation. And they can be converted to any other representation, including a three by three rotation matrix or a roll pitch yaw representation. Quaternions have really nice properties in the way that they represent rotations. That's why they are selected. But one problem is that they're not intuitive. Quaternions consist of two parts, a vector, which would be represented by this XYZ right here, and then an angular rotation. But 
they, they need some encoding or decoding for us to understand what that really is. So to study uh, quaternions further, please go uh, home and, and then click on any of these two links, one for your uh, YouTube, another one for Yoku, and you'll get this 15 minute video, which gives you a really nice introduction uh, to quaternions. Now for the TF message, we said it has the same information as a homo homogeneous transformation, which is right here in the translation and the rotation, but we also have additional information. Those come right here. We get a timestamp uh, for each of the transformations, so we know that at a particular moment in time, that transformation took place. That helps us to know where the robot was or has been. We also know the parent frame, that is the reference frame, uh, and that's important to know um, what is the parent frame of this particular transformation. And additionally, we have this child frame, which is the current frame. Okay, so that was very useful. Now, when we launch this simulation through Gazebo, Gazebo is in charge of publishing data to TF. Um, it'll use some C++ code from the TF library in order to broadcast or publish TF information. And it'll be doing that between any two frames in the system at about 300 hertz per uh, 300 hertz. Okay. Now let's take a look at how that topic might look like. Let's open a terminal, clear the screen. And then let me just say ROS topic echo TF. Now you can see a lot of data being plotted right here. And then right this area, you kind of just see a little flicker here. And it seems like everything is the same, but something is changing. So let me stop this topic real quick and show you, in fact, that we have different transformations being broadcasted. Here, the parent frame, the reference frame, is the base link. The child frame is the right wheel. So it's saying if you want it to go from the base to the link, you need a translation of this magnitude in the x direction, which is almost zero, one of about negative 0.3 meters in the y direction. Think about your mobile robot and what would it take to go from the center to the middle of a wheel. So this is about 30 centimeters in the negative y direction and then about 16 centimeters, 0 0.16 meters, in the positive z direction. And then we get this quaternion, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0.5, 0.5. I'll show you a um, image uh, really soon to give you more intuition about that. But that's between the base link and the right wheel. If we go a little bit further up, we see that we have a Similar transformation, but it's different because it's from the base link to the left wheel. And the main thing that changes here is the sign of the y-axis in the translation component, which is exactly what you would expect. And then here you have one more transformation between autumn and base link. So all of these are frames in the robot. Autumn, base link, left wheel, right wheel and we'll become more familiar with those in a second. Okay, so <clears throat> we see that this transformation, mathematically speaking, can be expressed in this way, with the base link as a reference and the left wheel as, as the child frame. We see that we have this translation and this quaternion. If you were to open our viz, let me show you how to do that. We could say ROS run RVIS RVIS. Depending on your system configuration, uh, you might get nothing here or some information here. First, we might set that frame to autumn. Um, we might add this. Let me remove these things real quick so I can show you more properly what's going on. You might go down here in RViz and click Add to add some the visualization of a particular kind of data. We can click on TF, which displays the TF transform hierarchy. 
immediately we get all these uh, frames and their names. Okay. We can say, let's take off those names. Let's take off the arrows that point to, to, the, to the base. And uh, we can take some things off here. This is from... Oh, this is from the robot model, I apologize. Let me make a few things here disappear for making this a little bit easier to see, not our wheel. This part right here. Okay, the robot model is what displays the robot. We might put those, those names back on now. So here's the base link, here's the left wheel, here's the right wheel. Okay, those are the frames. So we can zoom in right here. And then this is the base link, which has a red, green, and blue colors. Red is X, Y is green, Z is blue, RGB, XYZ. And so you can see um, the transformation. The left wheel with respect to the base. So it requires a zero change in the X direction. It requires a change in the negative Y direction and a small change in the Z direction. or uh, base uh, to left wheel, positive y, uh, positive y change and positive z change, I'm sorry. Another topic that is very interesting for us and it's related to TF is the joint stage topic. This topic is of type sensor messages joint states and basically what it will do is show you the position or the velocity or the acceleration, or even the, the forces of, uh, of a robot. So for example, we can say ROS message show sensor messages joint state. Okay, so for a particular set of links, uh, or actuators, or joints, sorry, not links, but joints, we get the name of those joints, we get the joint angle position of their revolute joints, or we get their translation of their prismatic joints, and then we can get the corresponding velocities and effort, which can either be forces or torques uh, for those joints. Right now, uh, the gazebo simulation is running. So if we say Ross topic echo joint states, we want to get all the information that is running on that topic. And what do we see here? Number one, we would see that we have two joints, left wheel joint and right wheel joint. So that is part of this array called name. And then we get positions or joint angles corresponding to those joints and radians. So here when we get this array of positions, it's saying that the left wheel is at a joint angle of 0 0.073 radians while the right wheel is at 0.086 radians. So in, in effect, this topic publishes the joint angle state of both wheels. And this information is necessary for us to publish the correct transformations on the TF topic. Uh, it's even more obvious when you have a robot arm manipulator. Imagine you're rotating the shoulder when we do that, the pose of the end effector will absolutely change because we're moving that arm to a different uh, location. Now, how is it possible that Gazebo is publishing joint state information? Where do we find that in the code? Well, the answer is, if we look at our, our URDF file, or more precisely this sacro file, Inside of this file, we have an option that says publish wheel joint state set to true. And this is where, where uh, the command is set for us to publish the joint states. 
Uh, in order to take a look at this SACRA file, we can use ROS ed. I hope uh, all of you are beginning to feel more familiar with ROS ed. It's a very powerful command because we can open any file within the ROS ecosystem in our computer in just one line. We need to pass it the package, in this case MOBOT URDF, and then any file within that package. So if I open a new terminal and I just type uh, raw set, MOBOT, I can just tap completion here, and then MOBOT2.sacro. Now remember that raw set is conditioned by whatever command you created in your editor in the bash rc file. So really quickly, I can also say emacs bash rc, and I can go to this line where we had export editor equals to something, and this can be your editor of choice. Could be Vim, Emacs, gEditor, whatever you want. Uh, for me, I, I chose Emacs without opening a new window, so no window, and when I do that, I can very quickly then run this raw site command and open that file in my terminal. So this SACRA file has all kinds of properties that correspond to different parts of the robot. Also, let me put some numbers here. Um, and eventually in this line 252, towards the end of the robot, we have a gazebo plugin. This plugin um, is driven by this file, libgazebo-ros-differential-drive.so, which is saved uh, in the binary repositories of your computer. And then it has this particular name. So this plugin, you can think of it as a library, a C++ library, and you can set some parameters on, on that file. So, for example, an update rate, uh, the names of the joints, uh, the separation of the wheels, the diameter of the wheels, the torque, the command velocity, uh, the odometry topic, the odometry TF frame, uh, the base frame of that robot, and then whether or not we want to publish the joint states. Okay, uh, here at the end. So that's uh, very useful uh, information. We had looked at gazebo plugins last week, and so we continue their use in our lectures now. Now, right now we're only publishing the right wheel and the left wheel information. If we want to uh, publish additional data to joint states, for example, the caster wheel and also the arm joint, then we need to include additional gazebo plugins in this SACRA file. For example, if we want to add caster wheel join angles, we can look at this new file, MOBOT with joint publication, dot sacro. And here in some of the last lines of that URDF sacro file, we have this gazebo plugin. And this one uses libgazebo ROS joint state publisher library or plugin. We give it this name, joint state publisher. And then we include additional joints to publish. That includes the cast, uh, caster two bracket on the right side, on the left side, and then the right caster joint and the left caster joint. Similarly, for the publication of the join angle of the arm, we can look at this URDF file, uh, minimal robot with joint publication. This is part of the minimal robot description package, different from the MOBOT2 URDF. And again, towards the end of that file, we have this Gazebo plugin, also using the joint state publisher, but in this case, we just set the joint name to joint1. When we do that, then we'll get more joint state information. Both of those SACRA files can be included in a common model file that we're going to call MOBOT with arm and joint publication dot sacro. Let's go ahead and open that file. Uh, take a quick look. So this is MOBOT with 
joint uh, with arm, sorry. And join publication dot sacro. So we can see that in this sacro file we are we have two include statements, and the file names of those are from the mobot urdf. We have the mobot with joint publication, and then from the minimal robot description package we have the minimal robot with joint pu publication dot urdf. Then we have a slightly we have some additional information here, but this common file then lets us integrate both of the other sacro files. Then using this launch file called mobot with arm and joint publication, we can uh, start this mobot URDF, but th with the joint state publication. So let me go back here, close this window, minimize this one. I need to kill uh, my previous uh, gazebo simulation model. In fact, I might need to kill everything here. Sometimes the gazebo simulator will take a little bit more extra time. Or I move the window some. And what we can do is, let's see, find our Gazebo Ross Empty World, start that again. And after that, we want to publish this uh, longer file, Mobot with Arm and Join Publication dot launch. right here. This is the right launch file. So we can run that. We'll still see the same robot sorry, here. But actually what's going on behind the scenes is going to be a little bit different. Let's uh, look at how this launch file is converting a sacro file into a URDF by running sacropy on it. So let's open our terminal here and instead of saying, saying raw launch, we can say raw set mobot urdf mobot with arm and joint publication dot launch maximize the window and so the first thing that we're going to do here is create a parameter called robot description this is a standard procedure in ROS. Anytime you want to display uh, the model of your robot, we're going to use the parameter name robot description. And then we use this function command and assign it the command sacro.py. Remember that find is used to retrieve the path of a ROS package given within the money sign and parentheses and so this way we can quickly find sacro and it's executable sacro.py then in single quotes we can provide the location of the sacro file okay so here we're saying mobot with arm and join publication dot sacro and so this sacro.py program over here will be converting the sacro file into an actual URDF file. After we do that, then the robot is loaded using um, <coughs> spawn model and by providing the robot description values as a parameter and saying that this is a URDF file and that the name of the model is mobot. Okay. We also load the controllers for the arm and so we use uh, another launch file here. So this is a hierarchical launch file. And when this happens then the resulting file is placed on the parameter robot description on the parameter server. So if I say ROS param list, <coughs> 
you can see that we have robot description right here. And if I wanted to see what's there, I can say ROS prime get robot description, and you'll get a really long list of text. But what this really is, is that URDF file right there. Okay, we also want to look at the joint states topic. Previously, we just pointed to it in the slides, but now we want to see the full extent of this topic. So here we can say ROS topic echo joint states. <clears throat> so immediately you can see that a lot of things are being published. Let's kill that for a second, re uh, clear the screen. One option that might be very useful for you is this N option that says how many times or what is the number of topics you want to publish. So here you might say, hey, if I, I just want to publish one time, you can do that. If you want to publish three times, you can do that. So here, for example, we're getting the joint states of the left wheel and the right wheel as we did before. But then we have all this new information here from the caster wheels. So we have the left caster joint, the right caster joint, and the right and left brackets as well. However, that's not the end. We also have the angular position for the joint one joint on the arm. Okay, so you can see that as we started a new sacro file, which had gazebo plugins for joint states, after we launched that, we got a lot more information uh, coming out of these joints. And all of this joint data can be used to compute link poses. Okay, the key point is that when we get joint states, its output can be used to get new 3D poses of the links on the robot. Now this point is so important, let me emphasize that, that Ross created a dedicated node called the Robot State Publisher. And what the Robot State Publisher do is it takes the joint states as an input. You can even uh, see it right here. Here we have the Robot State Publisher node. It takes the joint state data or topic data as an input. And then it publishes the 3D poses of the robot out and that goes into TF, which then shows those transformations between the links. Okay, so if we want to run Robot State Publisher, we need to do that manually right now, and we can say Rust run Robot State Publisher, Robot State Publisher. Okay, as soon as we do that, then we are we have more information coming out of TF. One thing that I want to show you on the next slide or two is show you trans, uh, chains of transformations. We know that this robot has a base frame and some of the transformations that you can have is the transformation from the base to the caster wheel right or the bracket top right, or a few of the other uh, frames in our robot. In fact, we can even have chains by having individual transformations that are multiplied together. Okay, so first of all, we want to be able to see all the frames that exist in this robot. How do we do that? We can check View frame, the view frames node in the TF package. How do we run that? You can say Rust run TF view frames. Okay, so if I go back to my terminal, let me open a window here, put it there, maximize it. So I can say Rust run TF, that's the package and then view frames, that's the note, it will tell me I'm listening to this topic for five seconds to pick up all the transformations. And this time you, you should have enough information to know the entire kinematic tree. What this node does, it prints a PDF file called frames.pdf, which shows the chain relationships across 
different frames in the robot. So here we can use a program like events or AcroRead uh, to quickly print or show what we have in that frame's PDF. Wow, so you see in fact that there's a lot of frames within our mobile robot now. Autumn is a static fixed frame that we created at some point, okay? And then there's a transformation from that to the base link and from the base link to, as you can see, each of the left wheels or right wheels everywhere. Okay, so this view frames tool is very useful. Another thing that we can do is check with rviz. So I showed you that earlier, but if we open rviz, we make sure that the fixed frame is set correctly. For example, autumn. Okay, we get to see a picture of this robot. And, and then you can click here on, on TF, enable it. And right now, a lot of the frames are being blocked by the solid color, which can be removed. Um, and then you can see the relationship of, of the frames or even the tree. So here we have the base link, the battery box, the bracket side one left, right, bracket side two left, right, caster drop wheels, and uh, things of that nature. <clears throat> okay, And all of them will have its coordinate frame and a name along with it. This is another useful way to, to look at, at those frames and their distances. All of this coloring can be removed uh, from robot model. Okay, So you could see all the frames that we have here and the relationships with one another. So far, we have done manual inspection of the existing frames uh, through TF view frames and or through RViz. Now what we're interested in is doing this in a more programmatic way, that is using C++ or Python. So section two will be showing us how to do that using the transform listener, which is a part of the ROS package for TF and has a C++ and a Python version. It allows us to compute the transformation between any two connected frames, alive or offline. Let's take a look. <laughs> 